I would like you to design the back end of an app that lets users download their data from their Facebook account. Sounds like a very useful service to have. Awesome. Yeah. I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> so, sounds needed. Um, cool. So I'm happy to dive in. I do have some clarifying questions, if that's okay. Maybe we can run through them first. Just want to make sure I'm clarifying some of my assumptions. Mm -hmm. um, so let's see. The main use case, as I understand it, will be we'll provide some kind of a user interface that allows users request um, their copy of their Facebook data. Mm -hmm. We'll build out the backend service that does all of the processing, prepares the data for uh, for the user, and then have some sort of a front end service that lets user do the actual download and copy the data to their local environment. Yeah. What? Okay. okay. Great. Um, a couple of clarifying questions that would be helpful for me. Uh, first is, how fresh should this data be? Once the user re sends the request, uh, do we care about the freshness of the data? Um, I'd like to hear you talk through some options for, yeah, what would we consider here? Okay. Okay, great. Uh, then how fast do we have to respond to requests? Are we under any obligations to fulfill the, their data requests within a certain period of time? Let's say that we are, our promise to the user is that we can give them their data within a reasonable amount of time being within that day that they request the data. Um, yes. And then I, for, from a product perspective, let's say that we want to communicate whatever amount of time it's going to take. And if you have an estimate for me for how much time it would take, I'd love to hear that. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, we can talk through some options. Um, uh, then the next question I have is, do we have to include all of the data for their account or uh, do we? can we give them options for what data uh, they should be able to select? Let's begin by listing out the kinds of um, things that they would be able to download, um, whatever you'd like to brainstorm there. Um, and then maybe we can talk through what would be reasonable as an, as an MVP. Okay. Sounds good. Um, uh, so given that we're operating within a very large application of Facebook, what assumptions are uh, can we make about a single source of truth for data versus like having to do the data discovery piece ourselves? Uh, talk a little bit more about the data discovery piece. Yeah. So for example, uh, I'm sure that Facebook has as a Facebook user, I know Facebook has a ton of different services that they run on the back end, right? There's okay. one for doing posts, there's probably some other ones for uploading uh, your images, there might be some uh, other ones for Marketplace. And so are they keeping all of user associated data in one place? Or do we kind of have to discover where we have pieces about the of data about the user? Let's assume that we have to discover it. Typically, these uh, operations will be very expensive because you're spending a bunch of time gathering up large sets of data about the user, uh, and then you have to store it. Um, do we care about the cost? Uh, do we care about how often a user can do that, um, essentially? Like, if we care about the cost and how long it's going to take us and the processing power behind it, we probably want to limit how often. When you, yeah, when you say we have to store it, what are we storing? the uh the gathered piece of their data that's ready for their download is got it. Okay. and then we you know we probably don't want to duplicate and generate these things on an ongoing basis so we would mm -hmm. like they do it when a user sends us a request to do so yeah. and that process is also probably somewhat costly so you know do we want to allow them to do this every day do we want to limit like how depending on the data freshness piece like we talked about like yeah yeah want to limit how often they're storing it i think let's let's answer that question once we've answered the data freshness piece um i think we'll have a little more clarity on what limits we can draw here okay yeah. um and then um what do we do we as a as a team that's building this feature do we know i uh, like what average percentage of users we expect to perform this action on a regular basis great question um Let's assume it's a large number, but let's say 5% of users every month request to download their, their data. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, and then I think, do we know what the average size of the download will be? Like how, 
average size of uh, of these archives for our users or fees? Uh, I don't think so. I think we might need to do some back of the napkin estimates to 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 come to an average. Yeah. Okay. And then, do we care what the users do with their data once they have access to it? Like, how much do we care about the usability once it's in their hands? Um, as in how readable is that data? That's right. Yeah. Got it. Um, I don't think we care. Sorry. We don't care about that as much for for the beginning. But if you do have some thoughts about how to strike a balance there, I'd love to hear them. Okay, great. Yeah. And then so that brings me to, I think, my maybe final question on some of the uh, requiring clarification is why are we working on this? What's like the driving force behind this feature? I'd say the primary driving force behind this paper, behind this feature, is giving people the power to see what they have put on their profiles on Facebook, um, and to make it easy for them to determine um, what kind of control they would like to wield over over that information. Okay. Yeah. So, like, when we think about metrics of success, how are we thinking about them? Like, if we were to measure this feature at the end and whether we build a successful feature, what will we measure? Great question. Um, I'd like to hear some of your thoughts on that. And then we can maybe talk about this when we're when we're discussing uh, ultimately what metric we want to arrive at. OK. OK. Uh, all right. Uh, so let me start screen share. And is that okay for me to look sideways? Because that's where my second screen is, and I'll be able to. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, you're totally fine. Okay, so hopefully you're seeing a blank, whimsical board. Yeah, I see it. So I know in the beginning we said we're designing the backend system, but I think just talking through some of the front end components will be important because I think there's some assumption in what the front end does mm -hmm. that we clarify as I think about designing the the backend system. Okay, sounds good. Uh, okay, so let me start off uh, by adding a little user icon. So we have this user who's going to decide that they want to start uh, a process of downloading their Facebook data. Okay. okay. So we're going to make an assumption that uh, within, within Facebook, there typically is some sort of a front end service that does a lot for us that initially takes in user requests that will do things like load balancing, routing users to the right data center, um, checking in things like authorization and authentication. I don't think we're building those services right now. So we're just going to hand wave and make some assumptions that those things already exist. Is that fair? I think that's fair. So I'm just going to call that out. There's a Facebook front-end service for load, bal like load balancing, limiting, authentication, function, et cetera. So that it just that we know that our service doesn't really need to worry about that. Mm -hmm. There's someone else who's going to take care of that for us. So really, the first uh, the first thing we're going to see is um, we're going to, at this point, hopefully we know that it is the right user. You know, they have an account. Um, uh, and what we're building is this um, application service that will receive a request uh, so I'm going to suggest something so I think it will be important for us to allow users to specify the date range for the data okay. range I want to make the reasoning behind that is it takes a lot of work to gather up all of the data especially you know we know that some accounts let's make, make assumptions some accounts are pretty old they have a lot of data so I think it would be beneficial for us to be able to limit how much data mm -hmm. we have from you got it. A request. You got it. Okay. So are you envisioning this as something where the, the user does not have an option to download all the data? Or if they want to do that, they just have to specify like the first day that they open their account um, to present? I would say that 
it's an option, but they should certainly have an option to download everything. So got it. Okay. Yeah. Just let's kind of make it easy for us to do less work essentially if we can. So that's fair. So we would have the user. Uh, we have a date range. And I will say that probably within our, you know, again, an assumption I want to clarify is we probably have a lot of extra user tied data that we maybe um, have some inference data. We probably have a lot of like M uh, ML and stuff like that, that we add additional data on top of users. Yeah. Like, want to see that if they're super curious but my guess is for most users like they just want to get their pictures and their posts and maybe some other stuff so giving them an option of filtering what they want to download again will allow us to just do less work i think yeah so. yeah i like that reasoning and then that filtered so yeah um, sometimes, you know, users might not know all, so they should be able to get all of it. But I think, um, just for the sake of, again, doing less work, um, this will help us do less work. Um, I'm making a ton of other assumptions, uh, that we'll talk through in a minute, but, um, so this is, you know, there's a bunch of these things because we're going to be taking a lot of requests. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, uh, another thing that we might consider, um, as a non-functional requirement is, well, there is already a lot of authorization and uh, authentication stuff that Facebook does for accounts for these particular services that access personal, like a lot of user data in one go, we might actually want to add some additional checks on top. Uh, or secure our service in in another way. So um, I don't know if that would be something that you think is required for this initial phase of the launch, but something for us to consider as a security. This is probably a high sensitivity service that we need to add additional security. You got it. Yeah, I would say um, I think I think that's fair. I like the reasoning that you've given. Uh, potentially one additional security check just to ensure that the user is actually who they say they are. Um, I think that's a reasonable thing to have in place, especially if you're downloading personal information. Yeah. Okay. So, um, cool. Um, other things that I'm thinking about that I asked the question about that maybe we should talk about. So scalability, assuming that, you know, 5% of our users, um, are using the service, uh, you know, if we know the size of our active users on Facebook, we can we can calculate that amount and then determine how many machines we need yeah. uh, for both our application service as well as data processing if we can roughly estimate the kind of the amount of data each account holds. Um, so we'll take that into account. Some other performance implications. So the only other thing I say is like we might be under um, uh, uh, regulatory obligations, especially due to things like GDPR, to deliver mm -hmm. this data within a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. So, for some accounts, gathering up the data might take a really uh, long period of time. So, we probably need to make a decision what happens in those cases and how we want to communicate to those users, especially if we have any kind of obligations to do so. Okay. Um, yeah. Like, communicate to those users the size of the data that they're downloading, or what else what would you like to Expected, yeah, completion timeline. Yes, that's fair. Um, okay. Any other things to consider here? So, yeah, on a, on a high level, that's kind of what the, some of the things we would have to think through. Okay. So I think the main pieces that we'll want our service to do is take in the request. Mm -hmm. And then let's talk a little bit about the data discovery piece. We yeah. will need some kind of a mechanism by which we can uh, discover what data we have about every uh, every user, right? So it, we either need a single source of truth for mapping all the services that could potentially touch user data or then deal with user data. Maybe there is a, um, a, a, a some kind of a data store that gives us that information or another type of registry. So if there is, that's great. That's one of the ways we can use that for discovery. 
Mm-hmm. That kind of thing doesn't exist. Then frankly, we probably need to do some like human work first to figure out what are the required data pieces that we need to gather. And then uh, if we're operating within a company like Facebook, understand what those services are and then create a contract with those services so that they mm-hmm. can provide us data in the format that we need to potentially want. Got it. Let's assume that we do have that mapping done and ready for you to use. Right. So then we would, that would be our source of truth uh we would consult that mapping so so synthesis data services mapping there's some kind of a service so we would use that We would use uh, that mapping, and based on that, fire off our. I don't my cur- curvy little data lines are very interesting, but here we are, uh, and, and fire off some requests to get data. Any questions so far? No questions so far. So we'll have a couple of these services. I'm just going to call them a data service because they're just going to process and return or, you know, gather up some data that we need. Mm -hmm. One. Nice. We're gonna ask them these services for data, and they're going to do two things. I think one, they're going to send us back a completion event once they're done, so we can tr- keep track of that. Uh, so these things are getting a little bit crowded. So, and then. They are also, okay, so once, you know, assuming that these these services are going to gather up some data and dump it somewhere, we probably need to do some post-processing once all of the data is gathered up so that we can actually give it to the user in a format that they want. Because uh, I'm assuming they don't want a bunch of like object in whatever yeah. format we get it back. So A bunch of JSON files. <laughs> I mean, maybe, uh, maybe that's fine, but you know, also like there's probably a bunch of duplicate data and data just like maybe that doesn't make sense. So we likely probably want to do some uh, mm-hmm. processing. And so here we have a data processing phase. We have a, a, a couple of these. Can you okay. okay, so they're going to place the data somewhere and depending on what you know uh how quickly we need to get this down we could use something like um my previous experience we could use something like hdfs and map reduce um uh, our first process pre-process the data the way we want and then actually reduce it to um to what we need and and then uh, kind of a critical phase here is that when the data is all gathered up, it's going to be a large thing. So we probably want to compress it somehow and then store it at a location where the user can download it from. And during the download phase, a couple of things that will be important for us, uh, again, given the size of the data, likely we need some kind of a a place where they w- already takes care of things like restarting the download, downloading data in chunks. We have to know yeah. bandwidth because not everyone has high bandwidth. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, if we have such a such a infrastructure at Facebook, which let's assume we do because we're probably not the only service that needs to do this sort of thing, then we're just going to store it at that location at that okay. So that users can download it from there. 
And do you have any thoughts about how long we would want to keep it at that location? Yeah, so I think that kind of goes uh, goes hand in hand with a question of how often we'd want to do this. Mm-hmm. And that goes hand in hand with like how, how fast do we have to fulfill some of these requests? So let's say we have, you know, whatever, 45 days to fulfill a request. I know that's kind of a ridiculous time. That's probably not very realistic. So let's go back and say we have 10 days to fulfill a data request. Okay. And so if it takes 10 days to generate some of these like larger data chunk, d- data, uh, data pieces, and say we probably want to store it for, for 10 days at least. Mm-hmm. Um, and because all of these processes will be asynchronous, one, they're probably like when you think about the data requests, they're probably not on the critical paths. Like they're not the same priority as, let's say, a new post or, uh, you know, viewing an image or whatnot. So I think they're lower priority requests. We can kind of run them in the background as, uh, as background jobs for some of these services. So we, um, uh, yeah, we, we just like, I think it's fine for us to leave them there for, let's say, 30 days mm-hmm. uh, and then delete them out. And then users can request a fresher version of their data if they, if they need to. What do you think are possible trade offs of us um, taking longer with these requests versus prioritizing them and getting them done faster? Um, just like users don't have become impatient uh, and don't have access to the download of their data. Okay. Um, so Got it. customer inquiries. How do you want to handle um, the data that gets added to their profile in that period of time? I think they can, uh, we could have a couple of approaches. One, I think it would be hard, hard for us to guarantee any freshness or something that's async. So let's say mm-hmm. have multiple data sources from one we might be, or you know, depending on how quickly can fulfill the request, it might finish in the first hour from you know the request that we uh, that we get from the user. Where mm-hmm. in service might take three days, right? So at that point, the first job already finished, and we don't like it's already kind of staler data. So I think we we just wouldn't be able to guarantee the freshness. Uh, mm-hmm the data until the request is finished. So I think the the thing that the user can do is request another version of their archive. That would be the trade-off that they're making. Got it. And if we say we're keeping the data you said for 30 days, um, then I guess the last question then becomes how long do we want people to, uh, or how often do we want people to be able to do this? Yeah. So um, my suggestion would be uh, that they can do this every 30 days. Every, okay, got it. Um, or it would go hand in hand with, you know, if, for example, if we hear back from users that that's, that time frame is too long, I think mm-hmm. it just goes kind of hand in hand with uh, how often, how quickly we delete their archive is like kind of mm-hmm. how often we can request a new one. I see, I see. So, and basically, there's a trade-off between how long we take to fulfill their request, how long we keep the data, yeah. um, the freshness of that data, and how often they can they can do this, right? Yeah. Okay, I see. I think I, I think the reasoning makes sense. So let's stick with the numbers that you gave for it, for this one. Okay. Okay. Cool. Great. Okay. These are uh, yeah great questions, and I think they're clarifications. And I just want to like reiterate that I think we should be listening and hearing from our users and if mm-hmm. the the timing doesn't um doesn't make sense for them i think some of the pieces we should design with that in mind like that's fair yes scaling them in a way that we could make it faster if we needed to uh uh but i i do think there's probably a limit in terms of how fast we can fulfill some of these requests yeah um okay so we got our data processing. It's going to create, give us, you know, create some data. It's going to put it in a data store. Okay. And then, um, so we got the completion request. We probably want data processing requests to come to back to our, uh, oops, that's what I wanted to do. 
Um, we wanted to just come back to our um, to our application. So our application service would need to keep track of all jobs that have begun, like essentially all of the requests that we have started. Mm -hmm. uh, and then would need to keep track of as it sends the request to each data service, a pay, get get the data. Once we get the completion request from the um, completion event from the data service, we also probably want to keep track where we need to keep track of all the data processing. So once the data processing completes, so that we can notify our users that their data is ready for them to uh, to download. Uh, another assumption that we're going to make is that there is some kind of a notification service at Facebook because we send out a lot of notifications to our users. So mm -hmm. Some kind of orchestration that needs to do that all um, together, and we don't want to uh, be in the business of doing that. So. Somewhere over here, so it's a notification service. So once everything is completed, we will say, hey, could you notify our users um, that their data is ready? And then the notification service will send a notification. Oh, sorry. User is really far away to our user, letting them know that their data is ready. And then they would have to go through another flow where they would go through the, uh, again, log into Facebook, go to the place where they can actually see that the data is ready, and then send a to request to our data storage, and then actually download or view their data. Got it. So, where would the um, fail safes live for, let's say there's a failure? for some reason, um, in the middle of collecting the data that is required for one packet, right? Um, where would that live? And yeah. what so, rudimentary uh, things could we have in place for, yeah, fail safes do we have in place for that? That's great. That That's a great, uh, yeah, great uh, question and something I should have talked about. So I think our application service is kind of that main um, service that is taking care of all of that. And we would have to decide uh, on either a retry mechanism or if we are going to fulfill the user request with incomplete data. Mm -hmm. I think for most of these things we probably can't. So um, that's one thing that I haven't touched on at all is that we need some kind of a, a logging mechanism uh, as well just to log things for both um, metrics as well as mm -hmm. Like, so if we ever need to like debug our system and say, hey, where did the failure occur? What happened? Yeah, yeah. Of the process that happened. And then um, two for metrics. So we'd probably want to do monitoring of average job completion time. We'd probably want to do some uh, uh, alerting and monitoring for jobs that have taken over a certain period of time so that we could debug the system. Uh, we probably want to have some retry mechanism for every step of this flow. Mm -hmm. it flow fails, we probably want to retry a couple of times before we actually start manual interference. So the more the more we can automate these pieces within the, the system, the better. But sure, uh, like any error, uh, they can occur and um, we just have to make a decision on what we want to do about that. Yeah. Okay. I think that's fair. Uh, let me see if there's other things that I should think about. Um, yeah. And I think we, you know, uh, we haven't really talked about um, any kind of testing. I think with these sort of systems, uh, there is a lot of testing that you have to do. And one of the things that you are relying a lot in, for example, in this architecture, you're relying a lot on other services to complete the requests, right? Mm -hmm. So if, let's say, the data service doesn't re return you a complete data set, but doesn't return you a failure, those will be the kinds of things that you have to decide how you want to test and how you want to handle uh, failures for. 
because you don't really own the service. And so you might not have full visibility in the kinds of things that are being returned to you and whether they're complete or not or true or not. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I think one last question I have. So we were talking about the trade-off between um, how fast we want to be able to fulfill a request, how long we're keeping the data, freshness. So let's say we do get feedback from c- consumers that 10 days just is way too much time. We want to start prioritizing freshness, not just for c- consumer satisfaction, but also legally. We are supposed to uh, fulfill these requests within, let's say, GDPR changes and says that we have to be able to fulfill this request within like 48 hours of, a re- of someone asking for it. What would this system, if anything, what would change in the system in order to accommodate that? Yeah. So um, one of the things that I talked a lot about is like if we allow users to set date ranges and filtered list, like filter the list of data, especially for date ranges, you can probably do a lot more in parallel if you do chunked uh, filtered data. So we mm-hmm. might want to figure out, for example, if gathering up all of the data by one data service takes too long, we probably want to get it chunked or like have more services in parallel running for different date ranges. Design so mm-hmm. services support date range filtering. We could scale, but all of I think all of our scale will be focused on essentially getting all of the relevant data for the user. You got it. Okay. Not at all. And we can, you know, we might be able to like, let's say we, we can actually probably, they're probably the processing pieces uh, also just because it's going to be working through a pretty large data set. There's probably mm-hmm. some optimizations we want to do there. So if we're doing more async processing, let, let's say on like HDFS, we might want to see if there's other services um, that are more like, I think Apache Spark might be able to handle, um, like is more costly, but can handle this a lot uh, Mm -hmm. lot faster. So just kind of depending on what the current infrastructure is and if there are other options for us to do more processing of data faster, we could. um, Got it. Okay. So chunking according to the, uh, chunking in different date ranges, basically, within the ones that they've specified. Yeah. 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 Would would being able to... um, consolidate so within each of those date ranges i assume there's going to be some searching of some gathering of photos some gathering of posts some gathering of i don't know your your friend connections that were made in that date range does that uh does that slow things down or are there more optimizations that we can make by consolidating those different types of data that are gathered yeah i mean i think uh, we're making a lot of, like, I think when I say these things, I make a lot of assumptions about how the data is sharded in the first place. So That's depending fair. on how the data is, you know, if it's already like sharded differently and this would be a lot of query time and like shuffling data from one thing to another, then mm-hmm. we consider other ways of optimizing how we gather, um, how we gather the data. Yeah. If like speed of the, of outmost concern, um, we could probably also just have some of these services start. Um, like if it's only 5% of the users, so I was going to say like we could see if we just want to pre-prep some of these archives, right? Mm-hmm. Some of the, for some of our, um, for some of our users. But I think if, if it's only 5% of our users, that's really expensive because we're not going to be able to like necessarily guess which account. If it was yeah. like 80% of our users are going to do this, then we could just start prepping these uh, these data yeah. dumps ahead of time. And then when the user requests it, it's already available. So it would be super easy. Um, yeah. yeah. Run, run it. But with only 5% of our users, I think anything that we would try to guess at would be just wrong. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think uh, that's fair. Do you have any closing thoughts? Um, yeah, I mean, we, I think there's, um, one thing that we, uh, didn't touch on at all is like the user experience of using this data. So if we think about forward looking optimization, that's probably one of, uh, one of the things that I would think about how we can make better is how users experience once they have access to all of this wonderful data, how they, yeah. like, what they do with it. Um, and thinking about how, um, how we can build a nicer service for them there. Um, yeah, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, 
I think I think this is a good place to stop. And you're right. I think um, if we were to work on this further, I think future future considerations would be well, why are users downloading this in the first place? What are they going to use it for? What is the best format to present them this data with? And one of the questions you asked initially, like what assumptions are we making about what is a metric of success here? Yeah. Um, is it just you know, how many people request to download their data? Or is it whether if someone sends in a request, do they actually download the come back and download the data that they have requested for? Um, so yeah, that's I think that's a consideration that we would dive a little bit deeper into if we were if we were working on this. Um, so I'd love to hear your thoughts, Tanya. How do you think that went? Um, I I think it went well. Um, yeah, just a ton to consider and a ton of assumptions. I think being made in the like in the design phase. Mm-hmm. Um, so definitely feels a little like the more you know, kind of the better system you can design. Um, yeah. But yeah, overall, I think a good starting point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, the, a couple of things that I noticed that you did really well, like you said, there's there's a lot of assumptions that you have to make with the system that a company like Meta or Facebook would have, right? You don't know how their internal sharding system work. You don't know how their data is distributed. You have no idea. You're just kind of guessing. And what I think you did really well was asking very, very specific questions at the beginning to try and get as much information as you can, as much information as is reasonable to get in that amount of time, right? Um, and otherwise, stating whatever assumptions that you are making, if there are holes that you feel like you're kind of glossing over with with whatever you think is going on in Facebook system. Um, I think that's totally fair. and. It also, as you think out loud about these things, it, it showed the interviewer that uh, that you are not only consider you not only know the gaps in your knowledge, but you're filling them in with reasonable assumptions that that work for for the situation at hand. Um, I, I think that's great. Number two, there were a lot of things that I didn't even have to ask you a follow up because you you got there. Uh, pretty you like beat beat me to the punch basically in in addressing something uh pretty quickly and i think that's that's fantastic it just shows the interviewer that you know how to drive the discussion and you know what is needed to be able to answer a question that is this big and complex um yeah i think those were those are things that you did really well i i think it's always a great sign for for me the interviewer when I am asked questions right at right at the beginning that I'm stumped by. I'm like, huh, I didn't even think about that. When you ask the question about metrics of success, I'm like, actually, this would help in yeah. designing the right system and figuring out what trade offs we want to make. But, but yeah, if we if we don't, if I don't have an answer for you at the moment, um, I think it's a great sign that you know what you're talking about, and it signals that you're aware that you a have experience in this kind of work, and that you're aware of how important. A question like that is in the direction of um, of a systems design. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you. I, I think. Sorry, say that again. Thank you for the feedback. Of course, um, I think this is going to be super valuable for everyone who's watching this at home. So, thank you very much for your time, Tanya. Thank you. And good luck with your interviews. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons below to let us know that this video is valuable for you. And of course, check out hundreds more videos just like this at tryexponent.com. Thanks for watching and good luck on your upcoming interview.